Hey, it's Doug with Backcountry Pilgrim. Let's talk about going car camping. Car camping is basically replacing your backpack with a vehicle. Whether you're just not too into backpacking or if you wanna do a bunch of hikes from an established location and you'd like to set up a base camp there, car camping is a great way to enjoy the outdoors. Now, if you're into hiking, you probably don't care so much about parking near your camp. However, the nice thing about car camping is that because your vehicle is carrying your gear for you, you can carry much more comfort-focused gear instead of focusing on weight and volume like you have to when you're carrying everything on your back. Personally, I prefer to car camp when I go do stuff with my kids because even though some of them are into backpacking, some are a little too little to go for very long stretches. And I find that often they enjoy going on day hikes more than backpacking and having a comfortable camp to get back to when you're done with your hike is a huge bonus. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on what I'm calling the big three of car camping. Now, since the car is taking the place of the backpack, I'm calling the big three your shelter, your sleep system, and your kitchen setup. If you can get out of the weather, have a good night's sleep, and take care of your meal situation, you are pretty much gonna be good to go when it comes to car camping. And really, most of the gear for hiking stays the same. For me, the big change in gear was the big three. And so I'm not going to do a deep dive into any of these items right now, but I am going to show you what my current car camping setup consists of. So beginning with the shelter, let's talk about the tent that I got. I wanted something that was going to be fast, simple, and no fuss. Now, I pretty quickly discovered that the Gazelle T4 hub tent seemed to be one of the highest ranked out there. It is an instant tent with a hub structure that allows you to simply lay it out, pull on some hubs, and it basically structures itself. There is a removable rain fly that goes on the top, but it is a very simple setup. I tried it first in a garage, and then again when I had my little boys helping me out, and we really enjoyed the whole setup procedure. Very, very easy. What put this tent over the top for me was one of the best tent reviews I have ever seen, including my own, on a YouTube channel called Camping Guidance. I have that channel linked in the description below. Check it out. As was pointed out in that comparison video and on several other reviews, the Gazelle T4 just dominates the market for these style tents. Now, even though we're not focused on weight and volume when we're talking about car camping gear, I am going to give those stats up front because honestly, I think it's kind of funny. This thing is not even remotely light. The Gazelle T4 hub tent weighs in at a staggering 30 pounds. It is also huge even when packed. When collapsed, it is 66 and a half inches long in an 8x8 carry bag that barely fits in my car. Now, of course, I could have gotten away with a smaller tent. Why did I get a four-person? Well, number one, I knew that occasionally I might want to take two of the kids out, and three people in a four-person tent is usually snug enough to start encroaching on the comfort. I wanted plenty of room to move around, especially if we got trapped in there during rain, and I wanted to be able to bring my gear in if I needed to and not feel like I was in a storage closet. So I went with the four-person tent, and with three people, there's plenty of room, but you definitely wouldn't want to have to spend a ton of time in there. For two people, it is a veritable palace. Now, the tent is not as heavy as it could possibly be. It's one of the few that does not use steel poles, but rather fiberglass. Where a lot of the weight comes in is in the materials. It is a 210 denier polyester tent. So this is not going to stretch. This is not going to sag in the rain, and it is very tough. Also, Gazelle chose to go with a full hub tent instead of movable joints. This is also heavier, but it is stronger and easier to set up. Now, the Gazelle did not do well in heavy sustained rain, but none of the others in the review did either. It was certainly no worse than any other tent, and it was better than some. For a normal amount of rainfall in not very gusty weather, it should do fine. One of the best features of the Gazelle T4 is its geometry. It has a peak height of 78 inches, which is quite tall. However, 
the interior space is not compromised by angled sidewalls as it is in pretty much every other tent out there. The T4 has vertical sidewalls, so you can literally walk right up to the wall, put your nose against the window, and your head is still not going to be touching the ceiling. This makes it feel quite a bit larger than the footprint, which is 94 by 94 inches might suggest, giving you 61 square feet of floor space. Further, the T4 has eight gigantic windows, giving you over 1,000 square inches of ventilated airflow. The inside of the tent is pretty simple. You've got two big doors directly across from one another, which makes it very easy for people to exit the tent without having to step over each other or a lot of gear. The T4 also uses some beefy, no-snag YKK zippers all the way around. You have six big storage pockets and one big gear loft, which should be plenty for the number of people that will fit comfortably in this shelter. Setup for this tent took about five minutes, and it's about six to pack up because you're basically doing everything in reverse and then also having to fit it in the carry bag. Now, the carry bag itself is something that I absolutely loved. Not only is it not difficult to pack the tent up, but it actually fits in the bag quite well without wasting any space, but also without having to struggle to get the tent back inside. The T4 also lays flat when it is collapsed, and so it is very easy to clean. The Gazelle T4 Hub Tent runs about $350, but I have seen it on some pretty fantastic sales, which is how I got it. Again, have a look in the description below for the links. Now, in addition to my tent, I also like to bring a Ozark Trail 10 foot by 10 foot instant pop-up shelter. Weighs 26 and a half pounds and gives you between 60 and 100 square feet of SPF 50 UV protected shade. It goes up pretty easy with a snap button system that I think could definitely be improved upon. However, once you get used to it, it is pretty simple. The four legs are angled, which gives it additional strength, and the canopy comes with its own tie-downs built in so that you can get it staked to the ground in case of wind. The accordion-style frame is a great place to hang stuff up to dry, and the whole thing remains portable after it is set up. So you can set it up wherever it is convenient, and then just pick it up and move it to wherever you want it. This is great for campsites that have shifting shade. I often like to set it up right over the kitchen area. This helps to ensure that even if there is some light rain, you can still get your cooking done. The Ozark Trail 10x10 Instant Shelter runs about 50 bucks. Let's talk about the sleep system. Now, I'm not going to get into sleeping bags or sleeping pads because I just use what I use for backpacking when it comes to that. However, when it comes to car camping, you do have some additional pieces of gear that can make your sleep system more comfortable and even more functional. If you're not a big fan of sleeping on the ground, you can always elevate your experience with a cot. The Teton Sports Adventurer Camp Cot weighs in at 20 pounds. It's a 75 by 25 by 17 inch cot that gives you a 71 by 22 inch sleep surface. Now this is actually the smallest of their cots. You can get bigger ones, but all of them support up to 400 pounds because they are made out of very strong canvas and steel legs. Now the cot itself is not terribly comfortable. I would recommend putting your full sleep pad and sleeping bag or quilt system on top of it. It gives you a nice upright space. You have something you can sit on if you're going to be in there for a while instead of having to lie down or just sit on the ground. And it gives you some storage space that you would normally lose if your sleep system is lying on the floor of the tent. Now, one thing that's really cool about the Teton Sports is that it has what they call a pivot arm. This is a patented invention that helps with the very last corner, which is usually the hardest to snap together. By using the pivot arm, it basically just snaps itself in place and makes setup and take down a lot easier. Now, one thing to keep in mind with a cot is that if you are a stomach sleeper that likes to kick a leg out, you're probably going to be coming off of the cot itself. 
At 22 inches, the cot is just barely bigger than a standard width sleep pad. The 25 inch wide pad is going to cover the entire cot and be lying right on top of it. You run into the same problem whether you're on a cot or not, but being higher off the ground, that might be a little bit more of an issue. The Teton Sports Adventurer Camp Cot runs $110. Now, if you are interested in adding a cot to your sleep system for backpacking, you might want to look at the Nature Hike Green Wild Camping Cot. This only weighs 4.8 pounds, and it is a 75 by 25 inch cot as well. One of the major differences with the Teton Sports is that the Nature Hike is only six inches off of the ground. You're pretty much going to kneel beside it and kind of roll on and off, and you aren't probably going to want to use it as a makeshift couch or chair inside your tent. However, that's the price you pay for backpacking gear. The way the Green Wild Cot works is you have two long support poles, plus the legs which keep the cot off the ground, which use the same kind of technology that you're probably familiar with, with portable camp chairs. Now, although lightweight, it still supports 330 pounds and comes with a breathable and tear-resistant 300 denier polyester fabric, along with its aircraft-grade 7075 aluminum alloy legs. These come with anti-slip stabilizers at the ends, and in my experience, it is just as comfortable as the Teton Sports. Now, I personally would not use a cot like this in my tent. However, for a tarp or cowboy camp setup, a cot can be extremely useful, especially if you're going to be camping out on sleep pad unfriendly ground, such as that covered with sharp rocks and mud or potential water. Getting your sleep system off the ground like that is going to protect it, as well as make it more comfortable and warm. The Nature Hike Green Wild Camping Cot runs $80. Now, in addition to my regular sleeping bag or quilt system, I like to take camping blankets as well. These are great as an extra layer, and they're also wonderful in the morning if you just want to get up and wrap a blanket around you as you venture out into the cold. Lately, I've been using the ZZ Lamb blanket. Coming in at about two pounds, this is a 75 by 52 inch blanket with 20D polyester on the front and nylon back. Windproof and water resistant DWR finish that comes in tons of designs and different colors. One thing I love about these blankets is that they have corner loops for stakes in case you are out in the wind and want to use it for a picnic or just a place to nap. And it also comes with a set of clip and snaps to wear in cloak mode so that you can keep your arms and hands free even while keeping that warm blanket wrapped around you. The recycled synthetic insulation works well, and although it's not going to pack down as much as down would, it also increases the blanket's water resistance. The ZZ Land blanket runs 30 bucks. All right, moving on to the kitchen. After years of just rocking the budget ice chest, I finally decided to get a nice hard-sided large cooler. And rather than having to skip a couple of car payments to afford a Yeti, I went with the Lifetime 65-quart high-performance hard cooler. This cooler had pretty high ratings. Now, it's a big boy. It weighs 25 and a half pounds, and it is 28 inches by 18 by 17. The interior, of course, is quite a bit smaller, it will hold 64 quarts or 75 cans. It is built with heavy duty polyethylene and polypropylene insulation, which gives it an eight day ice retention. It is bear resistant, so it does not have to be placed inside of a bear locker at the campground. It comes with rope handles, bottle openers, and lockable one-handed fasteners. This American-made cooler runs $200. One of the things I was most excited about upgrading was my stove. Now, I've had the standard Coleman 2 burner for quite a while, and it's always been fine. However, I wanted to look into something that had a little bit more control and a little bit more power. What I decided on was the Camp Chef Everest 2X stove. The Camp Chef Everest has won the best overall camping stove by Gear Lab and consistently showed up in the top stove reviews that I saw. The Camp Chef Everest 2 does weigh 12 pounds. It's 25 by 13 by about five and a half inches. So it's not really that much bigger than the Coleman stove, but it is quite a bit more powerful with two burners that can max out at 20,000 
BTU. And these burners come with excellent simmerability with their fine control knobs. It has a matchless piezo auto igniter. Its large size gives you 215 square inches of cooking space, so there is plenty of room to breathe. It's got a great windscreen with simple and effective attachments. If you're looking for one of the best camp stoves, check out the Camp Chef Everest 2X, which runs about $190. I personally prefer a refillable tank over using the small replaceable cans. You get a better flow and a gauge that lets you know how you are doing on fuel, so you're not going to have to worry about accidentally running out or carrying a bunch of extra fuel cans just in case. This is the Flame King 5-pound propane tank. Weighs in at about 9 pounds, and it comes with a gauge, but you will have to buy your own hose. In total, it's probably going to run you about $70. Now, I figured since I was getting a new stove, must need a new griddle. So I got myself the Green Life non-stick. 11 inch griddle. This is a 28 ounce griddle that is 11 by 11 inches. Makes it the perfect size to fit on the Camp Chef Everest stove. This is a PFAS free non stick ceramic made with 65% recycled materials. So it is food safe, easy to clean, and you can even run it through a dishwasher. The soft grip handles stay cool when the pan is hot, and the pan itself has a wobble-free base, which makes it easier to deal with on non-level surfaces and for even heating. Now, this griddle retails for $50, but I usually see it for around $30. Check the links below to see what it's going for now. One new addition to my car camping setup is a power inverter. Although I'm not usually a huge fan of bringing technology to the outdoors, since a lot of my car camping is with my kids, and there's always the possibility of being stuck in the tent for rain, I like having a way I can charge my devices if I need to. I picked up this inexpensive car power converter from Pizfow. It has two standard AC outlets at 200 watts and four USB charging ports, one of them being Type-C. Now, this is a 12-volt to 110 converter, with safe charging technology that will keep it from overheating. It's a nice size. Think of it as kind of a thick cell phone, and yet it has an integrated fan and heat dissipation technology, which is fairly quiet. The list price on this inverter is $36, but I've seen it go for under 20. So whether you are going car camping with the family, yourself, or establishing a base camp for some day hikes, Car camping can be pretty cool, especially if you have good gear. I hope this video has helped you in identifying some of that gear. Links to all of it can be found in the description below. And using those links does help the channel out monetarily without costing you any money. If you like the video, would you indicate that with a like and subscribe to Backcountry Pilgrim if you're into hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching.